I guess that was perfect timing because I didn't realize Bob's session was next, but here he is, Bob okay. Christman, um, our uh, SVP of channel, and uh, with Deloitte to talk about what you guys are seeing for customer success and um, the conversations, I think, that are happening at the various highest levels in the organization. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. Um, so being the partner guy, everybody stand up. Stand up. Look to the person next to you on your right. Introduce yourself if you don't know each other already and say, what's, what's the number one thing you've learned today? This is about partnering and partnerships. What's the number one thing you've learned today? <laughs> See, we just want to make sure everybody's, you know, revved up. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's time to get some... Uh, okay, okay, everybody sit down. <laughs> it's that time of the afternoon. <laughs> okay. Um, so my name is Bob Christman. As Jamie said, I'm the, the Senior Vice President of Channels and Strategic Partnerships at Tatango. Very excited to be here and, and to be here with all of you. Today we've heard a lot of amazing stories from, from our customers about what are they doing, how are they seeing things change. What we wanted to do is bring in a partner, one of our partners. Um, as was alluded to in the last session, we do have a partner ecosystem. Um, we have strategic uh, partners um, such as Deloitte. We have some of the others here today as well, McKinsey, Accenture, et cetera. We have some solution providers that are working in kind of the mid-market and SMB space, and we're going to be expanding to really get into ISV partnerships as well. Um, so a lot going on from a partnering standpoint, because we want to make sure we can serve all of you the way you want to be served. Um, so with that said, um, I'm going to let you guys introduce yourself. So Sujit, go ahead. Hi, everyone. Sujit Naik. Um, I'm with uh, Deloitte as part of the strategy and digital transformation practice. Uh, the work, work I do focuses on helping clients transition and scale um, as a service and cloud business models. So a lot of focus is on refining their go-to-market, um, integrating their entire go-to-market, uh, enabling the right types of capabilities. And so customer success is really kind of front and center in a lot of those, um, um, a lot of those conversations that we have with our clients. Um, and the work that Deepa and I do is essentially um, setting up, activating, and scaling customer success and clients. Thanks. Hi, I'm Deepa Sharma, part of the customer success practice at Deloitte. Uh, really excited to be here today. It's been an awesome level of engagement and dialogues and conversations I've seen and looking forward to the discussion. Uh, all my clients are up and down the Bay Area, 101 or Central, so I like to keep it that way where my clients are in driving distance and uh, hoping to be that way in the future. Excellent. So the first thing I wanted to ask both of you, you're, you're out there talking to multiple customers every day, and it's all about customer experience. What are some of the things you've seen happen, let's say, over the last 12 to 18 months? What are some of the things you're seeing, some of the trends, some of the things that really pop out at you that everybody here should know about? Yeah, and I think uh, some of those trends, I'll begin first, if, uh, and some of those trends are, I think, were discussed today as well. One of the biggest things we are seeing is this movement from CS as a function is what it was when it started out in the SaaS world, churn rate, retention, to CS as a discipline. And that's a journey that a lot of the clients are on, which is how do I actually get that transformation going? I think Dilip was talking about it, right? Data dimension, it's a it has to be embedded into the C-suite. So we are seeing three things at the end of it there. I'll leave it at that. One is there's a journey from a CS function where you start to get to CS mindset in the organization. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a transformational journey. The second is that transformational piece actually touches product sales, marketing support, services. So it's a lot of other things that have to change in order for CS to scale and get activated and work. And the third is, it just came up as a question in the end, which is, once you have, like a lot of my clients are in the B2B space, they have 60, 70, 80% of their revenue coming through their partner ecosystem. And somebody, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I'll be bold to make a statement. Nobody has solved the answer of how to do CS through the partner ecosystem when 80% of their revenue is coming through your partners. So I see that as the next wave, where now, larger organizations as they take CS from just SaaS or cloud business back into their legacy are starting to figure out, hey, legacy is 80% of my revenue, 80% of that revenue is from my partner ecosystem. How do I make sure that my CS philosophies are getting implemented through that ecosystem? And I see that as the next wave of this transformation in the C-suite that will come. And I'll just end with that. 
uh, CS has to have a seat at the CEO table. Uh, and we are starting to see boardroom conversations around it. So if you look at VCs and private equity firms, one of the questions they started asking in the companies they're investing in, particularly technology companies, is they've started asking, what is your CS philosophy? What are you doing about CS in your company as they make that investment decision? Um, one of the other things that we're seeing um, a lot of clients face challenges with is, uh, is how to take the CS discipline, like Deepak mentioned, um, and scale more broadly across organizations. So typically CS you know, starts with cloud or SaaS businesses. Um, a lot of our clients have struggled with kind of taking the concept of CS and then taking it across the board to the on-prem business. And more and more we're seeing the need for more consistent CS discipline. Um, the concept of hybrid, especially a lot of my clients are cloud companies. And so the concept of hybrid cloud is driving a lot of need for having that consistency in CS as a discipline between the on-prem and the cloud world. So, you know, one of the things you each touched upon, and I think everybody really touched upon it today, as, as CS expands, it, it does become much more holistic, if you will, right? It's not just about the CS gang. It's about how it touches all the other parts of the organization. And as you, you know, were saying, it's all the way up to the board. You, you, it, this is a board discussion. If you're you know, a startup type of company, you know, people that are considering acquiring you want to know what's, what's the CS strategy. And then if you're a publicly traded company at the board, they want to know what you're doing about this. Can you share an example of, of, of where you've seen this kind of come to life, if you will, and, and you know, what were the consequences of that? Yeah, I mean, so we've several clients, I would say, in different stages, but one that probably comes to mind is, is a software client that started on this journey about three years ago. And one of the things was, what they were seeing was, they were seeing a few things. Their NPS scores were down. They were doing internal customer experience quality audits, and they were finding a lot of issues in some of their internal cross-functional processes. And they were getting feedback from their customers saying that, you know, I'm not enjoying working with you. Either it's too much effort or the experience is not positive. I, I don't know what it is, but it's no longer enjoyable working with you. So they were starting to put together things around, okay, we're gonna put a task force, we're gonna put an audit thing, and we're gonna go fix it. And as we started talking with them, we realized that they had a very inside out perspective. Mm -hmm. They were completely missing the outside in. So as we started bringing it in, it became apparent that they had to give birth to customer success. Uh, and the, the cool thing that we were able to do there was we started this discussion directly with the CEO and his direct staff. And I, I kid you not when I tell you that it took six weeks of just discussions to get them to agree on, yes, we need customer success. This is what the definition of customer success should be. We're ready to start that journey. And they started with looking around and then consolidating the right people. I think we spoke here, like whether you pull people from sales or you pull people from services or support functions. And they already had a chief customer officer, but he was more in title, not in reality. This helped him become a real chief customer officer. And so they started down that journey, I would say about three years ago in 2016, 2017, and they focused on their higher priority accounts. And what they saw over the next three years is because of CS, they had to evolve. They changed their go-to-market. They changed their sales compensation. They changed their services strategy. They changed their partner engagement model. They started making all of these changes. And on the way, I think some of the discussion around the incentives for CSM and what you measure them on which products you put them on, that started to change as well. Um, and then they, they continuously are evolving. But in the three years, what they ended up seeing was places where they focus CS, the new product deployment was up at least 20 to 30% more than the accounts where there was no CS. Mm -hmm. uh, places where they were able to focus CS, the NPS scores, they were measuring NPS by account, went up by 7 to 12 points compared to where they didn't have CS. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the, the biggest thing was this, they had a whole uh, CS scorecard that the CEO started seeing every six weeks. And I recently met up again with the chief of staff to the CEO and he was saying that now today, we now feel that the conversations have finally shifted in the C-suite. They're starting to talk about customer value. The CEO is starting to ask questions around customer success versus just talking about product and revenue and you know, profit and loss. So it's taken them kind of that 
two, three years to get to the point where they move from a CS function to start getting, I would say, close to thinking about a CS mindset. Mm -hmm. And they haven't solved the partner equation at all as yet either. Uh, so that's where they are. And then they're doing some more innovative stuff. I know Sujit was helping them with. Yeah, so, so they are now on well, what we would call phase two of their CS journey. So when we first started, um, like Deepak mentioned, they originally started it as part of the chief customer officer organization. Now they are heavily uh, ramping up their cloud business. Um, so they're currently um, you know, up to 10% of cloud revenue, and they have ambitions of, of going, uh, you know, doubling that in, in a year or two. So there's, a, there's some realignment that has happened recently to the conversation that we had before around bringing customer success as part of sales. So what they've done is they've actually created for the SaaS offerings now, um, uh, their customer success uh, teams are actually part of sales, whereas for on-prem, it's still within the chief customer officer organization. So there's evolution that's happening. Um, they've also had um, some serious discussions around comp and metrics and org that have visibility at the C-suite level, and that is really needed because some of those hard decisions need to be driven down from the C-suite level. Yeah, and I would encourage any of you that are, I know we have you know, some current customers, we have prospects in the room as well. For any of you that internally are, you know, there's always budgeting that needs to be done for these things, right? There's a cost to all of this. I'd encourage you to really talk with these guys because they have worked with some of the largest tech companies up and down 101 and through the valley, including SAP, who you've heard a lot about today, in really helping to frame these discussions at that boardroom level, at that C-suite level, which is going to get the visibility for the project that you want to do um, so you can really kind of realize the full vision and, and hopefully make it a more holistic type of thing. Yeah, I'll add one thing to it. One thing I found, I know there was a lot of talk about how do you get you know, the CFO to sign off, as Jimmy was saying, and that's always a challenge. Uh, at this client and a few others, one of the things we are starting to see, there are two concepts. Uh, one is what I call correlation with belief. So you can always have a high correlation through, like if you're using Totango or something to show the results, the usage, the adoption, things that are going up. But it's difficult to prove causality in the boardroom or the C-suite because it can get very contentious. Did this really create that revenue opportunity or my sales guy did it? Or no, that was the services work or something else. But what you can do is you can have stories that you can attach to these correlations. So once you do the right story, you kind of create that belief in the C-suite. And that once you get that belief going, then it's a, it's a virtuous cycle that comes into play because you just feed off it and you build it. So I'm finding that correlation and belief are better predictors of getting the CFO. Uh, or what happens is the rest of the C-suite surrounds the CFO mm -hmm. in some cases. And they're like, we want this. We're going to figure out how to do it. One of my other clients, They've made customer success the number one no-fail initiative for the year, which means we will deprioritize budgeting of other things to prioritize budgeting and funding investment for CS. Uh, so so that's, that's one thing we are seeing. The other thing is this concept of what we call at Deloitte progressive ROI. So what you can do is, you know, you, you look at whatever you're using your scorecard. If your scorecard can be filled to the maximum, if you could get everything you need today, you would have the right ROI case. Mm -hmm. But what you do is you show that, but you build it progressively over three years to say, in the first year, I'm going to get 20%. Then I'm going to get the next 30%. Then I'm going to get the remaining 50%. So you show them a path or journey that they can continuously check on and feel comfortable that you're moving in the right way. So I've already shown you the end state where I'll get the ROI from CS. But let me show you the first 20% I'll get first year. It's only about adoption. Or first year, it's only about making sure that we get customers to come back and say they love the CS function that we just established. It could be qualitative or quantitative, but if you show them the path, I think the C-suite gets behind it with the commitment and resolve. And as long as you stick to the path, you keep getting the funding that you need to keep scaling it and get to that point over there. Excellent. So I think uh, we're about out of time. Um, yeah. But I want to thank Deepak and... <laughs> Excuse me. Sujit, for uh, joining me up here on stage. I know you guys are going to be around tonight for dinner as well, right? Yes, yes.
You have to leave. Sorry. Deepak will be here tonight. So please, you know, find tonight Deepak. Tonight I can drink wine you with can, peace. I don't have an 8.30 a.m. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> presentation. But we're going to go jog tomorrow morning at 8. I forgot to tell you that. So, um, but tonight, you know, find these guys. And again, they can help you have those boardroom discussions and kind of get, you know, funding in place that's needed to realize your larger vision. So thank you so much for both of you. Thank you for sponsoring. Thank you for being here. So thanks, everybody.